What on earth is this? It's me. <laughs> yeah, Richard Parr. It's been nearly, ooh, I'm going to say about 18 months since the coronavirus pandemic hit England. We've been through three lockdowns, a new beard, and the longest hair in my life. I last had a haircut on February the 13th in the year 2020. I nearly said 2000 there, which would have been very long. That would be down to my feet like cousin it. And my hair was literally a finger length. <laughs> yeah, absolutely crazy. It's uh, September the 15th. 2021 right now there's been a lot of changes firstly the look secondly i've had a girlfriend for nearly a year and thirdly i've moved in with her i'm now north of the river in london got a beautiful flat i'm sure you will see it during this journey uh, i've done little bits of comedy here and there and tonight will be the first time i have performed comedy since before the coronavirus pandemic and it'll be the first time ever that my girlfriend gets to see me perform. During the summer I got the chance to go and cover the uh, Golf Open Championship in Sandwich Kent. Very la -dee da <laughs> And they got very excited when I arrived in the media centre until they realised it wasn't Dave Grohl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was my girlfriend chuckling the loudest. Uh, she actually really enjoyed the gig, enjoyed my performance. It was a pretty good one to come back to actually. Crowd was a little quiet, but they actually warmed up to my act. It was back at the Cavendish Arms where I've had some of my best gigs and one of my worst. But it's now redecorated with dogs everywhere. But you didn't hear any howling. There were no howls of laughter when I did a, a bit of a uh, football hooligan impression. Not once, but twice. I also got to cover the, uh, the Euros at Wembley. England! Seagulls! As I try to develop as a performer, I decided to go and see my friend, colleague and football teammate, Rob Corcoran, and his band perform. And they were brilliant in Camden. You go laughing and crying, living and dying, all for the sake of a song. Open Championship in the, the golf tournament in Sandwich Kent. You're right about Kent. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it, it was right about Kent. It's very personal. You know, whiter than white. Yeah. Yeah. That was my first ever gig in Maida Vale. It actually went pretty well. Better than I first thought afterwards, having watched it back. I was actually pretty nervous, pretty anxious. And I think it was because the other comedians were really, really excellent. over you can thank me it's all because of me <laughs> doing my job I've met a lot of big names like Serena Williams and Zlatan Ibrahimovic I've even had Max Verstappen in my bedroom the Formula One driver <laughs> over zoom <laughs>
Welcome to beautiful Kilkey Castle here in Ireland. I had some stand-up comedy earlier in the week and last night I did some sixes cricket at a great venue in London. I couldn't really handle a googly or a doos rap. Oh, that's not going as well. But I hit a few of the balls in their cool indoor batting nets. Now I've flown out to Ireland, my first international trip since the coronavirus pandemic. Getting on a plane was a bit weird, a little bit strange. It's also my first trip away abroad with my girlfriend. I'm not sure how much time they're going to, there's going to be for comedy, but you know, there might be some funny stories I can weave into my stand up. <laughs> Just wrapped up monkey business, a very interesting night. The MC was very concerned that nobody was going to turn up as an audience other than the acts performing. And in the end, two people did. It was a little bit kind of awkward for them. My set went okay, but it's just so hard to tell. There was only about nine, ten people in the room. No one had huge belly laughs. I would say one act had the most consistent amount of laughs. I got a few good good laughs, good moments. The uh, the bit about Dave Grohl is going down very well. Uh, the opening line about being a TV producer is going down well. Uh, there is one bit about the Italian sports journalist which has got to go. It's just not working. Tried it four times. I met this one Italian sports journalist, and he went, "Hey, you look like a Dave Grohl." I said, well, "You're not the only person to tell me that." Even the lady from Iceland told me that the other day. Yeah. Ah, I see. You were from Iceland. <laughs> no, no, the lady from the supermarket said that. <laughs> yeah, they're number one of them. There's, there is something there, but it's not right at the moment. Another new experience, another new club, and we'll continue to grow. Just there is the comedy cabin where I'm about to do stand-up for the very first time. Apparently it's quite a professional looking gig. Not one I've done before. A little bit nervous, but I'm up for it. I'm really up for it. I'm gonna give it high energy. Even if the jokes aren't very good, I'm gonna give it my all and see what we can do. Let's do this. This is Comedy Cabin. Roar! Guys, the sound of the back up. Welcome to stand -up. We've had a great night tonight, haven't we? Yeah, let's do this. I am up for it tonight. I am really up for it. You've got a great headliner to come, but for now, you've got me. Time for some new material. <laughs> so Adele has got a new album coming out later this year, and it's all about divorce. Yeah, it's coming out just before Christmas, and that means that all the naughty kids will now get that instead of coal. <laughs> <laughs> of course, all the rich families will be buying the coal for their naughty kids this year, as they're the only ones who can afford it. <laughs> I actually study maths at uni, so I guess this doesn't add up. to come. <laughs> the only job I ever threw the towel in for was at the laundrette. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Yeah. Yeah. We moved in together, got a, got a nice flat, a nice garden, foxes shitting everywhere. <laughs> We've had to dribble my fermented pea, which is seasoned no less, with a little black pepper and a little bit of chilli spices, um, all around the garden to show that there's a new alpha in town. <laughs> so they're still shitting everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> We've even got a chicken! 
Actually, that's just what I call my girlfriend when she sneezes. Achoo! Achoo! So this is the actual garden that those foxes have genuinely <laughs> been shitting. You can see some of the garbage they've already left there. And this is a book that I've been using to try and write some new jokes. And that chicken joke was a new joke, but at the Cavendish Arms, I tried out a couple of gags using some techniques from this book by Joe Toplin uh, for his book, Comedy Writing for Late Night TV. And in particular, Oh, I was meant to put some notes in here, but there's a section on writing monologues. Of course, I've, I've lost it, the monologue section here. And he has an area called the six punchline makers. And effectively, you're, you're picking up a, you're, you're picking a, a topical subject, there you see, and then you're picking a couple of handles from that topic and try to make a joke from it. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because you should buy the book, because it's pretty excellent. Joe has written for all of the uh, big late night TV shows in America. And so I, I tried two new ones down at the Cavendish Arms and, and I think they went pretty well. There was a report that within three years, you'll be able to get a flying taxi. Wow, that's amazing. But George Jetson says he still won't be going north of the river. <laughs> He said, <laughs> he said he doesn't give a flying fuck. <laughs> uh, and I don't, I don't know if you've seen, there's an Indian restaurant which has been inspired by, you know, Salt Bay? Salt Bay, he does all of this. <laughs> like a crab, Salt Bay. You know, with his, his golden steak. Well, the Indian restaurant has been inspired by the golden steak and has made the golden poppadom. Ooh. Yeah. 24 carrots. One lad on the beer said, I've never had so much veg. <laughs> Actually, it'd be the one place you really do want deli belly, isn't it? Cha-ching! 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 <sighs> oh, it makes me think of Goldfinger for some reason. <laughs> It's only November the 3rd, 4th, it's only November the 4th and already there's a big old Christmas tree here in Shepherd's Bush, West London, White City. I'm actually going to see Graham Norton over at BBC Centre or it used to be BBC Centre, whatever it's called now. He's got some really good guests lined up, the likes of Stephen Fry, Ron Howard, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd has done a lot of comedies which I really enjoy, such as Anchorman. So we'll see if there's anything I can learn on performance and delivery that might be useful for the stand-up or any other types of performing or comedy. Within three years, you'll be able to book a flying taxi. That's absolutely amazing. George Jetson says he's still not going north of the river. <laughs> it's been a while since I looked back at this gig and one of the first things I immediately noticed is when people weren't laughing I would make noises like that. <laughs> one of the things someone mentioned to me was as soon as I started the set all they could notice was my nipple. There's also an Indian restaurant. I don't know if you've seen this. They've been inspired by Salt Bay. You know Salt Bay? Salt Bay. They've been inspired by Salt Bay and his golden steak. And they're making the golden poppadom. Yeah, wow. 24 carats. One lad on the beer said, I've never had so much veg. <laughs> <laughs> I love the boost. Uh, but isn't it funny how we start to rate everything in life? You know, even on Google Maps, the Pacific Ocean is 3.7 stars. <laughs> That's way behind the number one ocean in the world, the Indian Ocean. Five stars. Five star ocean. One review, but five stars nonetheless. And they're both way ahead of my favourite ocean. Yeah, Billy Ocean. 
Only 3.1 stars. Ready for an exact? Woo! Yeah, we've just got a lot of magic ring. We've got a lot of Growing up, uh, I used to have two breakups. One was mathematics, so I guess this doesn't add up. <laughs> but, um... 